Hey guys, Taylor here, and it has really truly been a while since I've posted a video on here. And because it has been a while since I've done a video because of life, because life happened, I figured since I have this free moment before the holidays started getting really super crazy, I will go ahead and do this video for you guys. And if it looks like I'm not wearing much makeup, it's because I really am not wearing that much makeup in this video. I have terrible acne going on right now. My skin is really bad right now. And so I decided to go ahead and kind of give the whole face glam a little bit of a break because I don't want to make my skin worse than it already is right now. But as usual, before we get started, if you guys end up liking the video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you are brand new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe if you want to be a part of this journey with me. Also, turn on the bell notification so that you can be notified whenever I post a new video. Alrighty guys, with all that now being said, let's go ahead and talk about real life autism stuff. This is some real life autism stuff we're talking about today. So if you guys don't know already, which I've pretty much mentioned this frequently on my channel or in my videos, I have autism. I am in no way, shape, or form a doctor, but for those of you who don't know what autism is, autism is a disorder that is in my head, in my brain. And if you've ever taken a psychology class in high school or in college, you know that this is the grand central station to everything in our daily lives. Like, this is grand central station. Well, since I have autism, it's very different. I process sensory information differently. I process the world around me differently. And I'm so differently wired that sometimes I get overstimulated and that will lead into an overstimulated meltdown. Well, for me, it's kind of different because my brain is twice as sensitive to the sensory messaging and sensory information that's all around me. I hear things more loudly, I see lights more brightly, I see colors more brightly, I taste food differently, I feel different textures of things differently, and I hear more loudly. I also can sense the emotions in an environment with people around me. So it's kind of like, I don't know how to explain that last bit, it's kind of like a domino effect. Like if you're feeling sad or if you're feeling really stressed. I can feel that and then I feel sad or stressed or I feel more upset. I also don't respond well to an abrupt change in routine or abrupt change in schedule because routines and schedules help me know what to expect and help me prepare for my day and that helps a lot for someone like me who has autism. But as cool as having autism is, autism is also the reason why they are a lot of limits to what I'm able to do as a person. One of them is my communication skills. Communication is so incredibly crucial for someone like me. It helps build relationships. It helps, you know, interact with other people. But autism kind of has a way of affecting my communication skills. I really don't know how, like I said, I'm not a doctor, but it somehow has this effect on me where I'm just not really good at communicating with people. And that is something I'm still trying to work on because it's so incredibly important for me to learn these skills so that I can go out in the real world and interact with different people. Another thing is that I don't drive. This is kind of, I think, a personal thing between me and my parents, but I don't drive because I tend to get very distracted because I also have ADHD and anxiety, and having autism on top of that, yeah, it doesn't help that much. And it's also because of the fact that on my 21st birthday, when I was trying to kind of put the car back in the driveway, because I felt panic and I felt really worried, I nearly took out my front porch. Needless to say, I will not be behind the wheel anytime soon. Because of my sensory stimulation problems and because I'm so sensitive to the senses and the sensory information around me, I have to be very, very careful when I'm buying tickets to go see movies or if I'm buying tickets to go to a concert. And guys, I have the perfect example or perfect story for this point. So I don't know if you guys know about this, but um, I'm a huge fan of Reba McIntyre. And recently, Reba announced 
her 2020 arena tour, which I'm like, what? And Reba announced a date, which was going to be in my hometown. I'm like, wait, shut the front door. And obviously I really wanted to go see her during this tour. So I decided to go ahead and try to buy tickets on pre-sale day. So I waited, I didn't spend a single cent on my paycheck, put in the code and it, what, I, I never felt more stressed in my life. It took me about maybe I wanna say an hour and a half to find tickets at a price where I can afford. And I ended up being $20 dollars short so what I decided to do was I decided to go ahead and spend the money I saved up for another concert which I will definitely get into in the next video because it's a Christmas gift related thing but the reason why I told you guys that story is because the more that I thought about it the more that I realized something something that probably could have saved me from three to five meltdowns if I had gone and if I had bought those tickets. So I'm sitting there watching all these videos that Reba posted on her social media leading up to the day of the public sale for the tickets. And I do have two Reba concerts on VHS and she puts on a very theatrical arena show. And I realized that some of those theoretical elements happen to be some of my triggers. Lights flashing and moving all over the place, a lot of people, a lot of loud screaming people, a lot of bright lights and a lot of loud noises and loud music, a lot of commotion, and again, those are some of my triggers. So I'm looking at the ordeal I went through that Tuesday before the tickets went on sale to the public as God's way of telling me, Taylor, I know you want to do this, but this is something that you're not going to be able to handle. This is something that mentally you're not going to be okay with. And you're going to end up feeling so stressed and so overstimulated that you just might not have a good time. And so that was when I realized that there are a ton of limits. And that's why I discussed with my mom the day I realized that. I mean, I'm not shaming Reba whatsoever. She puts on a heck of a show and I see those videos and I'm like, yes, queen. Main point of that is that there are limits to what somebody with me with autism can do. There are limits and that is a very horrible, very sad reality for somebody like me. Like, I can't work in grocery stores. I can't work in a store because it's very overwhelming, very overstimulating. A lot of people, a lot of commotion, a lot of different noises, and a lot of different sensory messages are in one store. So I cannot work in a store. Whenever I'm at restaurants, I can't sit there and carry on a casual conversation. So if I ever I'm at a restaurant or somewhere public, with my family or with my friends, you can find these little babies in my ears to help block out the noise and block out the stimulation with my extra sensitive hearing so that I could have a good time with my family or have a good time with my friends. Again, I'm horrible at my communication skills. I cannot handle a lot of chaos around me. It just gets overwhelming, overstimulating. I can feed off of stress. And I feed off of an anxiety and that's when my anxiety kicks in that's when my overstimulation kicks in and I just get really tensed up and I end up having an overstimulated meltdown but this year has been a year where I've had to fully realize and understand that there are limits to what I can do as an autistic person we are very strong people we are very creative people we are very insightful people but we are also very limited people with a lot of limits. It is such a very hard thing for me to say out loud, but I am a limited person because of autism. It's a mental thing. When I was younger, I would go from realizing that I have limits and then transition to anger. And now, for the first time in my, what, 24 years of life, I'm now realizing that there are limits to me and accepting the 
there are limits. Dang it, I told myself, I went through this like three different times before I started filming and every single time I've talked about this and I've said those sentences, I've teared up. Come on Taylor, Taylor stop crying! God has given me such a complex, complex disorder. It's not easy living with this, it's not. It has its challenges, like knowing that there are limits and that I do have to be careful with what I do and how I live my life and what I eat and what I hear, what I see, what I'm able to handle. There are those limits, but at the same time, it's a beautiful thing because I'm able to share these hard things and these feelings with you all and I'm able to help you guys understand it more and give you guys a more insightful view of the world and that is so incredibly beautiful, guys. And even though there are limits, that is not going to stop me from viewing myself as limitless. It's all about the mindset. I am limitless because I'm right now for the first time realizing what my limits are, what my triggers are, and what I need to do and what I need to avoid and what I need to be careful of so that I could continue living in this world that everybody lives in while I'm mentally disabled. But more importantly, I'm limitless because of God. He gave me this gift of autism and he's saying, use this and use your voice, help people, tell people how you're feeling and that is exactly what I'm doing right now. I try very hard not to say not very nice words on my channel, I'm always very clean, but I'm going to tell you guys right now, in reality, it flat out sucks knowing that there are limits to what I can do as a person and that it sucks knowing that I can't do a lot of the things that a normal 24 year old could do. I feel left out, I feel embarrassed, I feel mad, I feel sad, and I feel really guilty. But the happiness and the comfort that I feel is coming from realizing that this limit that I just realized that I have, it saved me a lot of problems. It saved me a lot of meltdowns in the long run. So if you are somebody on this spectrum, and if you have limits just like I do, we're tough, we're strong, we're brave, we're insightful and we're creative, and we're autistic. We got this. Well guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up if you guys liked it. Also in the comments below, what do you want for Christmas? Ooh, what I want for Christmas is a Jeffree Star palette. Hint, hint. I look forward to reading and replying to your responses below. And finally, as always, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more videos from me in the future, go ahead and give this channel a subscribe. Well, guys, that's it for now. Until next time, bye-bye.